Hi, my name is Doug Lamblum. I'm a beef cattle specialist from North Dakota State University's Dickinson Research and Extension Center. And I'm here visiting with Lucas Hoff and, and his son Levi. And uh, they're involved in a SARE project that we have uh, going at the research center at Dickinson. And uh, that project that they're working on is a backgrounding project to, to background calves using standing unharvested corn rather than engineered systems that cost quite a bit more money to uh, uh, to construct and also to pay for and so uh, wanted to visit with Lucas a little bit about uh, the project uh, what his plans are uh, why he got into this and so Lucas why why did you decide maybe to take a look at this approach rather than using a more typical or more conventional uh, feedlot uh, system well we kind of were in a system similar to that. Uh, we needed to move our system into a more environmentally friendly atmosphere, I guess. I wanted to get away from messy corrals and slop sure. and stuff like that. So uh, over the years, we just kind of stood on hills and we looked around our farm and we thought, uh, where would be a good spot to do something like this? And I uh, kind of chose this field here as I wanted to feed in the fields, I want to keep the manure out in the fields, I want it not to have to haul manure and stuff like that come summertime. So we decided to move our kind of our feeding operation over here and I guess give this a try. Didn't want to have to pour concrete. Okay, uh, in addition to, you know, we didn't want to build these expensive facilities mm -hmm. that, that cost a lot of money. But you also, I noticed you also have a, a corral that you're building on right now that, that uh, works with this cornfield. Yes. Some native pastures that are to the south here yep. as well. And, and, and you also had talked to the, the uh, uh, North Dakota Ag Department and, and those people in terms of waste management and water runoff and whatnot. And tell me a little bit about what you did to divert water uh, for this project. Well, we really didn't do a lot. Uh, we kind of looked at a good area and made sure we didn't have no areas where we would contaminate waters, uh, streams, creeks, anything like that. So this is one of the reasons we chose this particular spot because there was no risk and the, uh, the health department and Stockman's Association uh, groups that we worked with were kind of excited about the spot we chose and thought it was a good proactive way of doing things. Um, connecting the field with the natives, we're, we're able to use the fields for feeding, we're able to in the spring also use the same operation to uh, calve our cows out and turn them up into the native hills and stuff like that. Uh, as far as water management we just did a very small little amount of dirt work to divert clean water from the hills into an old stock dam that was not being used anyway and uh, that's pretty much all we had to do. We It was pretty much a, I guess I like to think of an ideal spot. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like an ideal spot, and then as I look at the corn crop that you've got uh, growing here, you told me that you used the combine to get an estimate of what the yield was on the corn that you grew. Tell me a little bit about the about the corn crop and the, the type of variety, perhaps that you that you're raising here. Well, we uh, we raise we're raising our corn similar to uh, how we raise all our other combining corn. The only real difference here is we fertilize it the same and stuff like that, um, treat it at the same. The variety is a long maturing grain corn. So it's a 95 plus day maturity grain corn. Okay, that's more like a silage corn, isn't it? More of a yeah, forage, more but of it, a forage corn? But it makes cobs and it's, it'll sure. still make cobs if the year everything works right, you get a late frost and we can have some pretty good grain on it. Okay, what but, kind of a yield did you get out of this particular crop this year? We took the combine and we made two passes through. So we went down and back twice and our yield monitors ranged in that 35 to 40 bushel yield as okay. what it would have yielded if we would have combined it. And it was high moisture as you would anticipate it to be because of the long maturing corn. Yeah, certainly so. Uh, we see the calves are out here. Uh, they, there's both steers and heifers. You've got uh, yes. all of the calves. There's about, what, 200 uh, head or so in this cornfield of what, 30 acres? Uh, there's roughly 30 acres, uh, 30, 31 acres. Um, yeah, and there's just a little over 200 head. This is our whole calf crop. Okay. Big, smalls, heifers, steers. We didn't do no individual picking. Uh, we put everything in here. 
because, and we weighed every calf individually, so we have their beginning weights going in. Okay. And um, we too wanted to know how the big calves do versus the small calves, how the heifers do versus the steer calves, etc. Okay. We've had about, what have we been in here? About, uh, what, uh, uh, two weeks? Um, a little short of 12 days or something? November 4th is when we churned them out, when we opened the gate into the fields. Okay, so 13 days. Yes. And uh, so about two weeks, we've been in the, in the corn. Mm -hmm. We can see there's still some ears as we look at the, at, the, at the husks that are hanging down. There's still a few ears there, a few on the ground. Pretty typical of grazing corn for sure. But we've got forage here yet, and so that these can, can graze. I also notice that you have a, a couple of hay bales, uh, some supplement for them, kind of to help if you had any concern about a little room and issues. Uh, got a little bit of hay there. And, uh, how much hay are they eating? You know, we we put the bale feeders out. Um, I suppose we'll go through a bale maybe in two to three days we go through a bale. We fill the feeders once a week and that's three bales out there in a week. Okay. Uh, we also started the calves in the bellering or in the weaning process when they were in the bellerol corral. Uh, we did give them some whole corn to kind of get the room them, you know, starting yeah. to get familiar with the, the whole corn idea. Yeah. So we did do that. Not very much though. We just threw oh four or five bucketfuls a day out for them just to give them something to get used to and well, that's a good idea to transition that rumen into this into this corn crop, and with 30 bushel of corn in here, they, the interesting thing about calves, did you notice how they went to the to the ears? How did how did they act? Did you look at the ears as they were grazing through here when they first came in? Did they go right to the corn, or did it take them a while to figure out that there's corn underneath those husks? You know, by the second day, they knew where the corn was, and as you stood out here and watched them, it. It kind of amazed me how these calves would work on those ears, play with them in, in their mouth and try to get their mouth open wide enough. And they played and played and played until they figured out how to bite them off. And boy, after that, this even in that cold snap, this field was full of calves. Uh, we had that cold snap and it, 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 it nothing bothered them. Okay. The cold, the wind, none of that kind of stuff bothered them. They were out here just kind of enjoying life it looked like. Do you like. think the standing corn acts a little bit like a snow fence or a little bit of a windbreak? Oh yeah, definitely. It definitely okay. did. It, All it, right. The cold days we had there it made no effect whatsoever on these calves. No effect. Well, that's neat. Um, we did roll a bale out thinking we were gonna give the calves more access to hay and that was a mistake. All they did is lay on it. <laughs> <laughs> they, they came in, thought we had candy, and they looked and they laid on it, and that was a mistake. That was a waste of a bale, so we, you do got to keep them in feeders and just let them kind of free choice as they walk past to go get water. We do have some stress lick barrels out here, 22% stress lick barrels with mineral in and loose salt. And um, Pretty much besides setting those few bales out, we don't do nothing but watch them every, every day. So when you talk about that, uh, it's really reducing labor so you can spend time for other farm work, uh, fall repairs, building on your corral, uh, it, other things. Or even if it was a situation where it was a good time to haul grain, you could be you could be hauling grain or working on some equipment yeah. instead of feeding cattle. It does, dramatically. I, I'm, it, it uh, I guess, exceeded what I thought it was going to gonna be. <laughs> uh, have you had any sick calves? Uh, we had one calf and that was just about three days ago. He, I wouldn't say he was overly sick, he just looked a little droopy. We did bring him in, give him a shot and perked him up and the next morning he, when we opened the gate out of the sick pen, he went straight to the cornfield. <laughs> he didn't even look back, so really, no, we didn't, I like I say, he just had a little bit of the droopiness look on him and um, didn't know what to expect myself, so we just gave him a little booster right away. Other than that, we've lost no calves, and uh, pretty much as you can see, this is how it is all day long here. They look very content, don't they? I mean, they're yeah. just grazing, and they that's what thats what ruminants want to do, is they want to graze, don't mm -hmm. they? They like to be out, and they like to be moving. They're, they're, they look extremely content. Uh, well, Lucas, I, I thank you for the time to be nope. here and, and look at this uh, at this project. And uh, for now, then, we'll, we'll uh, shut down our video. And thank you, those who are, are uh, watching this video today. And 
and we just uh, ask in, in the future we may come back and do another one when we weigh these calves off of this project and we'll have some data on how the calves did in terms of, of just maybe some growth, maybe not a lot of growth, but we will see some growth in these calves uh, after the end of the project. So thank you for now and, and uh, we'll talk to you again in another video. Thank you.